The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, and Star Cable. Worldwide, toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, you can always chat with somebody here at our studios by using the MSN address, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. And yes, Exxon Nation, the X Store is open. www.xzonestore.com. My guest this hour is Kelly Hampton. We're going to be talking to Kelly about Into the White Light, the revelations of Archangel Michael. Now, Kelly Hampton is a compassionate, spiritual, intuitive, a compelling speaker, media personality, and star healing intergalactic energy practitioner and workshop facilitator. She is a third generation metaphysician who works with the angelic and ascended master realms in her teachings. She is also the author of Into the White Light, The Revelations of Archangel Michael, a profoundly important book as channeled to her. Um, through the divine guidance of Archangel Michael. Joining us now is Kelly Hampton. Hey, Kelly, welcome to the X-Zone. Thanks for having me. Kelly, what was it like when you realized that you were able to tap into the angelic realm and that Archangel Michael himself was the person that you were dealing with? <laughs> well, remind me, how much time do I have? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. It was... Um, well, it happened about in 2005, as I write about it in my book, which you were so kind to mention um, in the introduction, that prior to 2005, I had been having telepathic communication with my mother, mm -hmm. who crossed over when I was a young girl, I'm now 52, but in any event, there were some processional things in my development before um, I was awakened in the middle of the night by a big bright white light that identified himself as such. So um, to just to give a little context to your listeners that may not be familiar with me, it, it was certainly out of the blue, but it wasn't really out of the blue. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a awe-inspiring, um, still can't really believe it sort of experience. But um, since that time in 2005 when the information for the book came to me, I continue to counsel people on a daily basis with the guidance of uh, the archangel. So he didn't leave me. It wasn't like a, a one-time mm -hmm. revelation, and then he disappeared. So I continue to be able to tap into his frequency on a daily basis. But to answer your question, I guess it was awe-inspiring, humbling, amazing, gratifying, uh, all the things that still really he brings to me every day when I when I draw from his information and, and counsel people today. Kelly, please stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Thanks very much for joining us. Kelly Hampton's my special guest, Exo Nation. We're talking about Kelly's book, Into the White Light, The Revelations of Archangel Michael. Kelly's website is www.intothewhitelight.com. That's www.intothewhitelight.com. Dot com. Kelly Hampton's my guest this hour, and Kelly and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network, and Star Cable. Don't Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. 
Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Kelly Hampton's My Special Guest. Her website is www.intothewhitelight.com. And uh, Kelly was describing just before we went to the break uh, how she awoke in the middle of the night and there was this bright light. And it turned out to be Archangel Michael. Now, I was telling Kelly on the commercial break that if that happened to me, I'd have a minor stroke. And she said, but Rob, there's so much more to the story. So please, Kelly, tell us. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, the, the the immediate rest of the story was that it took me really until the third night, as I write about in, in the introduction, to um, believe that I was really hearing and feeling what I was. And the first two nights, I said no. <laughs> And so, you know, after the third night, I I sat down at my computer. I, I had written other books, so writing was uh, quite familiar to me. They weren't in this genre, but it was quite familiar to me. So mm-hmm. after the third night, I, 
I did sit down at my computer, and what happened was um, a seven-week transmission of angelic guidance. Well, some people call it automatic writing, and I guess yes. that's what it was at the time. Um, although, in a sense, it seems a little limiting to my way of thinking now. But in any event, I, I simply, as I write about it, it was like I, someone flipped on a light switch in the mm-hmm. room, and I sat there as an open channel. Any of your listeners familiar with that terminology, I guess? And every day I worked a little. Every day the angel would pour out the information, and then uh, uh, when that transmission of information that compiles the book stopped, it was just like the... The switch went down and the room was dark again, again, uh, just in terms of the, the content for the book. So um, it, it was and still remains a, re- a remarkable thing to me in a sense that um, in many ways, I, I guess I'm like everybody, I consider myself very ordinary. Mm-hmm. And um, how, how, so, long did, how long did the channeling last, Kelly? Well, um, again, I had other things going on in my life. I had two young children, so... Um, I, I would go in there for about mm, three hours a day, four hours if I could. And um, so if I had dedicated, if I had more time, it mm-hmm. would have flowed very quickly. So there was no interruption. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, you know, if we were to stop on a on a particular topic, um, the angel would begin right back again, and um, he did. That's what happened. So... Did, did uh, it's not the last book. I know that he's he's telling me there's more. I'm to get to more. He keeps saying more, please. Now, did Archangel <laughs> Michael tell you why he chose you? Uh, no, I've never even really asked that question. I guess you'd think that would be like the first thing I would ask. <laughs> but um, um, to give you a little listeners a little more history, prior to his arrival, um, Archangel Raphael came, and I guess you might say he sort of tested the waters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, and then his guidance lasted maybe several months, and then as if I'm talking to you, he telepathically said to me, "I'll be leaving." So this is all prefaced by um, maybe a ten-year um, exploration of. I actually, I guess, if I were to label myself, my experience into the spiritual side began as a medium when I was able to hear my mother in my twenties when she crossed over. So that telepathic. Uh, communication was growing, practicing in place, um, and being, I guess, reactivated, you might say. I was learning. So there were a good decade of learning before the angels, angels plural, um, appeared to me. So by the time that they did, I was quite familiar. I had shifted my mind completely thinking from thinking, this can't happen. I can't really hear. I can't really connect with souls on a level and know that life is everlasting. So I'd replaced all of those thoughts um, over the years. And so, of course, what I believe now that everything is given in, in a divine plan. So I'm, I'm grateful. Angels. Uh, peop- there are many people who believe in angels. I believe in angels. And yet there are still so many who don't. And the way I see it, each and every day, someone's life is touched in one way or another by an angel. How do we convince people that angels are real? Well, that's a very good question, and that's, I suppose, part of what my message would be, is that I, in no way, I would it would say um, uh, to be exalted in any mm-hmm. way as someone with special abilities, because the ability to be intuitive and connected to Source um, exists in every human being. So um, there are demonstrated ways to help with that connection. Of course, these mostly I've learned through hearing them um, from the angels, but it is, of course, something that's with deep within everyone that can be brought to the surface, and some of the ways for that about the angel connection is um, meditative states, quietness of mind, calling on them by name, and um, to demonstrate, it's, it's a bit like Michael would say, well, you come with faith or you come with trust, and so I didn't initially, you know, I would ask for proof. So Mm -hmm. I guess if you're asking how do we know they exist, well, on a very simple level, in my own experience, I can say I didn't believe. There was a whole period of time where I didn't think I could hear what I was hearing from another dimension. So I would ask for proof. Send me a sign. Send me a letter. Tell me this. And all of those things in quite remarkable fashion, which are really like the basis of my next book, 
um, were demonstrated to me. So the mind, the mind wants to know. The mind wants proof. That's the mind. The soul, I'm taught, never lies. So it's really um, a fluctuation, I guess, of convincing the mind, really, until a person reaches a place of faith and or trust. What are some of the messages that Archangel Michael gave you to share in your book? Well, he, he gave many. And um, it, the book is written like um, um, in a parable style, and there's a flow and a rhythm to the, to the wording. And so mm-hmm. um, some of the best ways, or a best way to demonstrate that is really to just share a short um, affirmation um, from the books that might give readers an indication of how um, how deep and profound the wisdom wisdom is. Um, there's a, for example, there's a place in the book. Michael talks about a chart in a register, and Michael goes on to say that the chart is a written verbal and mental agreement to a master, gods, and mother and father to abide by a certain code of conduct while on the earthly plane. He goes on to say, we have the power to review charts and registers at any time of our choosing. On earth, I have heard this spoken of as a purpose, a person's purpose in life. Every soul, whether small or large, young or old, black or white, yellow or red, has one primary purpose in life, followed by several, at least three, other purposes. So he presents a lot of information that, in a sense, that might be completely contradictory um, or unknown to some thought patterns that people may have had. In fact, he acknowledges this early on and says, you know, he'll, he'll present some material and say, I ask you to pause and reflect upon this without judgment. So that's something um, that I hope readers will um, take time to examine just in their daily life, um, if that's the teaching they get, is that less judgment um, in the world today and in their own lives, less judgment. Kelly, how has your interaction with Archangel Michael changed your life? <laughs> well, um, you know, in many ways, uh, circumstantially, I, I'm still a mother. I still go about life mm-hmm. um, in that same uh, construct. But, of course, on a more uh, profound level, um, it's enriched my life beyond measure, and it's enriched my life how? Because through his wisdom, I'm able to um, help thousands of people now, literally thousands of people, through whatever issues they may be having, and not just the issue at the moment, but of course, I can't. a person cannot keep um, expelling the message without, without the message becoming them. You know, it's sort of like you... you you live and think or eat a certain way, well, that Mm -hmm. becomes you. So certainly I'm not implying that I'm (laughs) angelic because I'm not. I can lose my cool. But I would like to think that, you know, through osmosis, if nothing else, that my level of compassion through him, really, I give all credit to him, through him has um, enriched my life beyond measure, that the the fearful person and the traumatized person, really, from the early passage of my mother, that, uh, you know, the faith of the, that knowing that life is eternal, that, that moment that that realization went on and it's demonstrated every day as I'm able to uh, counsel people and help them connect also with their loved ones or Michael will help make the connection for them. You know, that is where the, the pure strength, I, the complete most utmost joy that I'm given is that my place of beginning, you know, was there. And where I am today, I would have never in a million years thought it was possible. But I, I was uh, an angry, God-hating person uh, for my having lost my mother. And so by the grace of God, these events have unfolded so that I can pass wisdom along, um, hopefully in a way that not only gets people through the moment, mm-hmm. but Michael teaches them things that propels them to help themselves forever. Okay, So they're not continually coming back to source for answers, that they are the source. He he guides them in a just a beautiful, no other word, but divine way. What happens to us when we die, Kelly? Well, uh, my belief system, again, is demonstrated by what I was taught um, from the angel, and many things happen. He describes in my book that there are many levels in heaven, that, Mm -hmm. in fact, even the word heaven is, Michael is a very literal guide, so... 
um, is everything carries a sound vibration. So it's the kingdom of heaven. That's his <laughs> preference. It's the kingdom of heaven. And many things happen. It depends um, in, in what order, uh, what level a soul goes to. But certainly it's not a static existence. If anyone might be listening that thinks um, it's a static existence, that, that's far f- from the truth. Um, he describes a place in the kingdom of heaven called the Sacred Garden. He says it's neither a place on the other side called heaven, nor is it a place where all souls go. The Sacred Garden is sometimes spoken of as the Garden of Good and Evil, but it's not the same place. It is a place in our universe, but it is also a feeling one has of total acceptance. So when a soul arrives at the Sacred Garden, mm-hmm. that is what is exactly what is offered. All right, stand so, by, Kelly. You and I have to take a commercial break with the news. Exonation Nation, Kelly Hampton's my very special guest this hour. Her website, www.intothewhitelight.com. That's www.intothewhitelight.com. Kelly and I will be back after the news as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Kelly Hampton's our special guest this hour, Exonation. Her website is www.intothewhitelight.com. And Kelly is the author of Into the White Light, The Revelations of Archangel Michael. Once again, her website, www into the white light.com. Kelly, before we went to the break with the news, we were talking about what happens when you die. How do we know that life is never ending? Oh, gosh. Um, well, um, I guess we know from um, Michael's wisdom, mm-hmm. other angels' wisdom, um, we know by. Um, my ability and many other people's abilities to connect with a dimension outside of our own, I suppose. And we know when we're ready to know, I guess, is the other thing to say, that all the convincing um, in the world, if if the soul's ears aren't ready to listen, you know, are not going to be convincing enough. So can we go on just a minute and describe the sacred garden to finish that? Oh, yes, please. Please do. It's a very... Thank you. It's a very active place, as Michael writes about. So in describing the sacred garden, again, this is Mark Archangel Michael's mm-hmm. wisdom about the kingdom of heaven. He says, imagine a place where all the elders of your community congregate. To me, an elder is a soul who has mastered some of the tougher lessons. Most often, these souls are advanced in development, but we don't use an age here. Imagine them, then, all of them talking at once and hearing what is being said. Think of the elders as being wise and mature. Imagine them wearing brown robe and everyone dressing the same. As we imagine the scene, suddenly something violent happens and the convening elders are shaken. Though no one can see what the action is, all can see the response. And this is what actually happens in the sacred garden when a new soul enters. It's like an earthquake, like a rocking episode is literally a vibrational 
vibrational explosion. This is how it is to be, Archangel Michael says. Those of us who have spent enough time in the garden expect this to happen, and we rejoice in the knowledge that a new soul has entered our realm of learning. So if I can take a minute just to say that the book, um, of course, in, in earthly religions, Michael is often seen as a saint, and um, but clearly he demonstrates in the book that what when he mentions the word master, whatever master a person has on earth, they'll greet on the other side. So he mentions if that's Buddha, it's Buddha. If it's Allah, it's Allah. And he makes no distinction there. In fact, in the context of the book, too, he talks about um, what earthly, what the limitations of earthly religion are. So in that grace, he opens, I hope, everyone's eyes about the, the divides of religion and the unity of spiritualness. Mm. Kelly, what information do you get from those who have already passed on when you're doing uh, channeling and you're communicating with those on the other side? What you know, What's it like for someone who's who's passed? For example, when you've communicated with your mom who's on the other side, what does she say it's like? Yeah, well, that's a great question because it's never always quite the same again because there's levels in the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven and the levels, of course, which speaking of um, soul levels. And so it's dem- been demonstrated through her to me and through many other connections. Sometimes souls are in a place called the healing garden, which Michael describes right. in the book, and I hear from other souls. Sometimes they're in a place that they call the viewing room, which is actually like a movie theater. If you can imagine this, you can open your mind enough to imagine this, that there's a viewing room where souls on the other side can c- catch glimpses of what's going on in the lives of their loved ones. So that's something that happens. There's a place where they can go to study. It's called the Halls of Knowledge. Michael writes about, speaks about shares. My mother shares that sometimes she goes to a place for knowledge, and then, of course, there are other levels as well. So it's a um, moving, fluctuating, totally engaging, uh, very ordered, structured, like divine um, realm. When you're when you're communicating with those on the other side for your for yourself or for others who come to to you for your your ability to to communicate with the other side, how do you validate who you're talking to? Well, that's that's a good question. Um, I don't val I don't need to validate anymore because I'm simply on the frequency mm-hmm. that they are in. Okay. So, um, not there was a or early twenty years ago, I suppose I. I would, but oftentimes it's not really validated through me. It's through the person that um, is, is seeking the counsel, mm-hmm. you know, that the loved one will say something that they that resonates truth with them. Um, they might send them a sign later, and then I get a phone call, and the person says, I saw the sign, you know. So those kinds of things are in the kind of like work-a-day world, you know. So I, I don't question anymore. You know, questioning and doubt is not a, a frequency that I... Um, engage with um i don't even not sure i i can engage with that so um did i answer that well (laughs) i mean i I can answer to the best of my demonstrated ability and that is that when the connection is made you know people do not come through if they don't have a message to send to someone so we we call if if someone were to call me for a mediumship counseling Mm -hmm. session I would ask them to call on the loved one by name so that, that it's sort of a filter, if you will, right. that prevents everyone from coming through, okay? Yeah, well, uh, there's, there's a question, Kelly. How do, the, how do those on the other side know that they can communicate through you? Well, I love that question because how would I know, except I've heard this myself through readings, mm-hmm. and I'm not the only one, but I hear them say they can see my blue cord, okay? Wow. So I'm assuming that other... Um, spiritually connected mediums or telepaths or whatever we're calling ourselves um, also have a blue cord. Now, there's still many things I don't know. I can't, I don't ask everything. So I'm told through readings because people, uh, many of my clients might ask, for Mm -hmm. example, or the, or the soul on the other side will say in the meeting, you know, reading, uh, we can see her blue cord. That's a good question. How else do they know that I am a valid source? So, there's color. Color is a frequency, of course, like every other energy, and so um, and energy can be seen as color. So in the sense we're talking of that 
thought and and connection is energy and frequency um it'd be interesting to get like all the you know spirit psychics of the world united but i have i hear that i have a blue cord that they can see kelly do did uh, did archangel michael give you a message to share with the world about 2012 well uh yes many messages <laughs> and i Again, I'm only smiling because the message is huge, profound, and it, I can speak uh, on it as you've done through me for hours, or I, can, or I can get to the nuts and bolts of the message. And the message certainly is not one of fear. The message that the energy between now and 2012 mm-hmm. and beyond is actually what he's calling, he calls it by many names, but they're all kind of tied in, calling it the ascension energy, and that's part of what he's asking me to teach now in star healing, which he gave to me in January of this year. So ascension energy involves love and kindness, that the fear-based world, the ego-based world, the worst of the worst that's plagued uh, humanity in a worldwide um, situation is being moved aside. It's cosmically being moved aside. um, It's spiritually being moved aside so that this is the year of the expansion, the, the awakening, the words like the awakening, mm-hmm. the shift, all these things. They're talking about consciousness, the shift in consciousness, the expansion of consciousness so that higher vibrations can enter in. And what are the higher vibrations? Love and kindness. So that things like doubt, fear, violence, jealousy, on and on, it's Michael, Michael has labeled one at a time, are, are simply not going to be reachable by the world any longer. It's it's a time of celebration, actually. You know, Kelly, uh, I am by no stretch of anyone's imagination a medium, a channel. I I I've got as much psychic ability, I think, as Joe Blow, my next door neighbor. But but <laughs> but over the years doing this show, and when we started talking about uh, December the twenty first, twenty twelve, a feeling deep inside of me came to the top where th- that date is going to be the rebirth of spirituality mm-hmm. it, in such a way that this planet and all the people on this planet have never seen. People are going to start asking the right questions to the right people, and hearts are going to be opening and minds are going to be opening, and, and the impossible will be possible. So true. This is so true. Said in a, a different way, yes, exactly true. So that means that... Um, Many people, many particularly light worker people, are feeling feeling like an urgency, yes. myself included, an urgency or a, I know I'm supposed to do something, but mm-hmm. I don't know what. I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of times I've been hearing that. And Michael, the shift in the readings from uh, 10 years ago to, I'd say, within the last six months, if Michael's counseling someone and he knows they're a light worker or they're ready to do light working work, and that is light worker is anyone that's willing and able to share compassion and love he enlists them now to serve in this army and what is the army it's the unseen spiritual army so the change definitely and clearly came i could put it on a clock as the date you're doing it's all part of the same thing you didn't call people like this 10 years ago because it wasn't time but now this feeling people are having you know that something bigger is coming it is it's it's here in some cases it's already here and the biggerness is as you say living a life of truth within oneself, living a conscious truth within the world, and so that everyone is uplifted. So how do you, what what advice or, or what message does Archangel Michael have for the masses who, who, are being told by many people that December 21st is the end of the world, that there's going to be a cataclysm, that, uh, you know, even even the planetary alignment is going to have a negative effect on, on the people of this planet. What was the message that Archangel Michael gave to you to, to, to calm the people, to reassure them that all will be well? Well, thank you. He... He, he spends less time dwelling on the negative, of, co- of course, which is just what you stated, and, and takes attention to the positive, which was what you and I just stated, mm-hmm. if that was clear. 
So he'll, he'll continue to use me. He'll continue to use other people as vehicles um, of this shift in consciousness again so that our minds don't really go to the place of fear. And, and my just knowledge as I get connected and I see every people, many people all over the world saying the same thing that I'm saying is that just by intention, okay, the fear stuff is kind of fading away. As people become more educated, that whole fear about 2012, that, that's just not going to even be able to take hold. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like you often talk in parables, and it's you know, a bit like water that's just going to run by people. So again, um, to help, uh, I will be thrilled to restate, and that is that this is a shift in consciousness of a global perspective. Okay, There are going to probably be some... Um, Mother Earth um, belches, as yeah. she's to- told me, um, before, you know, it's a releasing of the toxin. Again, this is an interplanetary, interdimensional kind of shift we're talking about. So um, the Earth itself is mm-hmm. going through some shifts. So people have asked me, well, how can you explain Haiti and how can you explain the earthquakes in Haiti? And so Michael will say, well, I suggest to you that Haiti is Haiti has been restored to a better place than Haiti was before it was before the earthquake came. So um, in that sense, there is a bit of reality, but again, it's not fear-induced reality. It's that if there are low consciousness places in Mother Earth, that's often where the hiccups going to come, but the hiccups are not going to go on forever. And again, it's for a greater, higher power. It's not a sense of fear inducement. So the negativity that is being talked about uh, when it comes to December the 21st, 2012, where is this negativity originating from? Well, again, I, I, in some ways I feel um, that I operate in a vacuum not knowing all cultures and all religions, mm-hmm. but um, a lot of this came from the Mayan calendar, but not the Mayan calendar itself, but the misinterpretation of the elements in the Mayan calendar. So, um, again, um, it, it's a bit like any, th- any story that's told throughout time. You know, the meaning can shift and change. So, again, by and large... Um, my experience and my voice and many others like me is that um, if we're talking numbers here, you know, the, the fear-based people of the world may number two and those that are getting into the enlightened places knowing that my world is going to expand, that I can accomplish anything, that the world is totally prosperous and the best is still to come, ten times, hundred times that number. All right, Kelly, please stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Kelly Hampton's our special guest this hour, Exonation. She's the author of Into the White Light, The Revelations of Archangel Michael. Her website is www.intothewhitelight.com. That's www.intothewhitelight.com. Kelly and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue for tonight, Friday, April the 30th in the year 2010. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, and Star Cable. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com.
True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. And welcome back, everyone. Kelly Hampton is my special guest. Her website is www.intothewhitelight.com. We've been talking about Kelly's new book that is out, Into the White Light, The Revelations of Archangel Michael. Kelly, it's been a great hour with you. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us here on the Exxon and for sharing the message that Archangel Michael gave to you to spread to the world. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me, Kelly, uh, I read on your website something called Star Healing. Can you tell me about it? Yes, I'd love to. The uh, exciting thing about this for me personally is that, like my book, um, the angel just sort of dropped it in my lap, and he did the same thing in January Mm -hmm. of this year with asking me to begin teaching, facilitating, and then, of course, teach others to facilitate something he's calling asking me to call Star Healing Intergalactic Energy. And before I kind of just take a minute to go into Michael's exact words about the information, if people are listening and wondering, well, who should, who could attend, who should attend? Yeah. And as Michael says, anyone, in, anyone who has a personal or professional interest in health, spirituality, human growth, uh, body workers, massage therapists, chiropractors, anyone who's interested in accessing the divine wisdom, mm-hmm. either as a healing tool for themselves or to go through all the journeys and become certified in, in practice um, in their own as an extension of their own healing modality. So it was quite a quite a thing uh, for me to be in the airport traveling from my last uh, place of engagement with work to be sitting in the airport in Rhode Island and here again, without even really asking. I knew nothing about the star galaxy. Now I'm learning. I see others that reference it. There's, I, I see how he, Michael's telling me he links it to mm-hmm. the Palladian energy, and there's other information out there. But when it came to me, it's like cold turkey, just like the book. I had no awareness of what Unreal. was going on again. So the star galaxy um, is next to the Palladian galaxy, Michael's telling me. And the, the, the benefit... Um, why is this being asked to be shared now? Um, It's my understanding that other archangels in other parts of the world, by the way, because I've met one woman, are are asking people in South Africa. There's a woman I've met um, in England. I understand there's someone in China. Mm -hmm. Um, The different archangels are asking different people in the quadrants of the world to teach a form of this higher vibrational energy. And it's sort of like Michael says, you can keep healing people like you're reading and using an old textbook right. or you can access um, a new textbook and the textbook then of course is the vibration that mirrors what the world is going through so it makes complete sense and especially when he says something hey, <laughs> everything kelly I, I i hate to right. do that kelly i hate to do this but we've run out of time for tonight do me a favor if you get any messages from archangel um uh, archangel michael or any other angel that needs to get out to the world you let me know we'll get you back on okay Hey, thanks so much. Kelly, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Continued success, and I look forward to meeting you one day. Exonation. Thanks so much, Rob. Take care, dear. Kelly Hampton has been my guest, intothewhitelight.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break at six and a half minutes past as we continue here in the X Zone. 